Thank you. Good morning to all. Um, I understand that there is a translation uh, to Hebrew, uh, sorry, to English and Hebrew. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll uh, talk in Hebrew. Uh, as I see that most of the audi audience uh, are, uh, you know, local. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for the invitation, and I'm really delighted to take part in this conference today. And since this conference is designed for people who look at our world, the world of gas and oil that is developing in Israel, from a perspective that is a little bit different than uh, the one of those who, be, who, be, who participate in other conferences, I, I've prepared a general presentation which would give you the background and hopefully also will serve as, a, as a, some foundation for the uh, following uh, discussions. Okay. This is how the EEZ looks like, the EEZ of Israel and the EEZ of uh, Cyprus. That is how it looked like until 1998. If you don't take into consideration how many efforts and discoveries at sea near the shore, in fact, what we can see here is the playground, so to speak, of oil and, uh, oil and gas uh, searches in what we call the Levantine uh, Basin and a little bit beyond that, as it looked like in 1998, if an empty playground without any activity whatsoever that, uh, in, would, that invited companies from all over the world to take part in the attempt uh, to discover uh, oil and gas in Israel. And we have to say that despite the, uh, that despite the fact that about 511 drills were made in Israel, most of them, almost all of them, at, uh, 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 on, uh, uh, on, the, on land and uh, most of them disappointed the investors, apart from a small discovery in Helitz and some attempts, as I've said, with Oxy in, uh, near the shore. In fact, uh, most of the EEZ was totally virgin and uh, invited international uh, activities, uh, but nobody wanted to come to Israel. Nobody wanted to come to Israel, especially because of the Arab boycott. Nobody wanted to take the risk and come to a place to a place that people know that is not a province of oil and gas and to pay the price immediately in the world, the price for taking part in activities in Israel. And despite all their tricks and conniving and plotting and all the attempts at bringing serious people to Israel, in fact, we could not uh, get here any international professional entities with the expertise and know-how that are a sine qua non for success in drilling, especially in the deep seas. And this situation could have remained as is for many, many years uh, without this wonderful combination of, deter of determination and luck and help from heaven. And we were able to bring here in 1998 Noble Energy Energy. And by the way, Noble Energy at the time was called Semidam, a very small company that sat in uh, Oklahoma, even not in Big Houston, but in Oklahoma City, and had no international activity. And it had this motivation to break through the borders of the United States and to deal with uh, searching oil and gas outside the United States. And I'm always telling this story, and I'm going to make it shorter, and this uh, illustrates where we were and where I hope we won't be in the future because where we are today with all the regulation and all the problems uh, that we have from different perspectives, we might find ourselves again on our own and that of course is going, that of, that of course is going to be a disaster and we should avoid it. The story is very simple and I'll make it brief. We decided in Avner, we decided that we want to bring in an international partner and we sent a guy uh, on our behalf to Houston after being rejected by all the international companies and we told him you're going to sit in Houston and you're going to go through the telephone directory from A to Z and you're going to pick up the phone and speak to all of them you're going to cling to all of them and try to persuade them to come to Israel and, and after three months he said to me listen there are only two companies that have not rejected us have not said no as yet and I took Danako and my lawyer and we 
uh, went on a plane and there was a, a black cat on the in the uh, going in the aisle the um, uh, uh, the um, um, uh, plane was uh, uh, directed back to Israel and the uh, black cat was taken down and then we went we we uh, had we were taxing on the uh, tarmac and then there was a blow up of the uh, right engine we were uh, directed back again for the second time and then my lawyer said nothing good is going to result from this uh, from this trip and I can tell you today that all the good things in the world resulted because when we landed I asked uh, uh, what is I asked him what is happening he said only one company is, uh, remains because when you were uh, flying uh, to Houston uh, uh, one rejected us and the price was fifteen dollars per barrel not fifty eight point three fifteen dollars per uh, barrel and in this environment nobody wanted to go to uncharted territory but uh, we met the people from Semidan and they hadn't and they didn't know almost anything about the world and this was a big advantage and they were looking for new territories and don't quote me but in fact we were almost we almost had to rape them in order to come to Israel because it was the last uh, uh, the last card in our deck and the rest is history so uh, you need this uh, combination that is directed from heaven, I would say, but with a lot of determination and daring and courage that actually brought this uh, industry to the place it is in uh, today. And that is why uh, we have to be so careful when we look at this uh, market, when you, we regulate it, we have to nurture it in order to uh, take us to wherever we are today and beyond. So this is the playground uh, where, in fact, uh, uh, there uh, was no activity at all. In the next transparency, you can see in red, sorry, I'll go back. We can see here in red on the right-hand side the delineation of what we call the Levantine Basin. And in fact, all our discoveries today are being within the Levantine, are within the Levantine uh, delineation. And you see here the map of licenses in uh, orange or in yellow, and these are the, uh, our, our, our holdings. All the other things are open. The sea is big. There are a lot of a lot to look for in it, and this is one of the most important messages that we would like to convey to you. We have made it, and we have made it big time. But we believe that there are more successes down the road if we only en enable this industry to advance and to develop. We would be able to attract uh, more uh, investors. The more, the merrier. Uh, and we are going to have more discoveries. By the way, the U. USGS uh, published in 2010 an evaluation that in the Levantine Basin you have a potential of 122 TCF. Up to now in the uh, different discoveries which you are going to see in a minute, we have found about 40 uh, TCF. So the playground is big and there is a lot to be done there and uh, naturally speaking we are going to concentrate on those discoveries uh, to which we are partners. So everything be began with Yam Tetis. It was drilled in 1999, Noah, then in 2000, we drilled the uh, another discovery, Mary B in Ashkelon, and where we have the platform that you can see in the small picture, 28 BCM, a little bit less than 1 TCF, and we celebrated it as if we have uh, uh, hit the jackpot. I'm talking about Noah and then about Mary. We thought that this was America, the discovery of America. We thought that the sky was the limit, that everything was good. And today, if I jump to the end of the story, we are 40 TCF. So today we have resources to the tune of 40 TCF, 40 times the Diamantetis discovery. But never, as you probably know, you never forget the first time. So we are never going to, re to forget Mary. Mary was the first uh, discovery. And this TCF, people who are speaking about Karish and Tanin that you have to uh, 
sell two TCFs, uh, this almost one TCF is the one that actually uh, 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 built the energy uh, industry in Israel. And people talked about the importation of gas from Qatar and other places, but there was no significant consumption of a natural gas in Israel apart from Arad. People did not use na Israeli natural gas. In other words, the first stage in the year 2000 was a stage in which we consolidated an Israeli uh, energy market and we joined hands with the government but with the Electricity Corporation that actually received a very important strategic decision to uh, convert the uh, production of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, um, electricity instead of uh, diesel fuel and fuel oil with uh, natural gas apart from the coal which is the base load. And this was a dramatic decision that enabled us to develop Yam Tetis and to, uh, and to uh, build the Israeli energy market. And in this situation between 2000, sorry, 2004, when we started to supply the gas in practice until 2009, which I'm going to speak about in a minute with the Tamar discovery. In fact, the Israeli uh, market was under uncertainty because we, uh, people went over to the consumption of natural gas without the ability to see how this consumption is going to be supplied by natural gas from Israel. And then, of course, uh, the gas from Egypt uh, came into the picture, and it is a whole different story, which I'm not going to elaborate on, but, uh, elaborate on, but uh, Egypt was, was to be another resource, and unfortunately, it stopped almost immediately, and then there was negotiation about a, a different uh, price, and uh, then, even then, they agreed because of strategic reasons they wanted another supplier, and this gas did not appear and did, uh, did not arrive, and Israel was uh, without of another natural uh, gas reserve. And then there was the second big bang, that was Tamar in 2009. The Tamar reserves, or the permits, we had two permits, uh, Tamar and then Dalit, and in fact, this is a concession that was held by BG. BG had this concession, both of them, those first two, together with Israeli partners, and they tried for almost seven years to find other partners, because in that, Everybody works on joint venture. You don't open it on yourself. Uh, they looked for partners for a long time, but they couldn't. Couldn't find a partner to the drill. Uh, it's expensive. They thought it was going to be high pressure. Drilling, and they thought it's going to be three TCF as a potential, but they also thought that the environment that exists in the Israeli market because of the dumping that was done of the price, because we have to understand that when you do some supervision and you put the prices into formal constraints, that there's no connection between that and the economy, eventually the investors run away. And why did BP give it up? Because somebody uh, spoke about the, uh, the uh, dumping of the price did not enable them uh, economically to justify it. Actually, they uh, deserted these uh, licenses or permits, and then we uh, came in, Delic and Avner. Then uh, Noble Energy came as an operator, and the drill of Tamar is the next big bang, because that actually discovered the real potential of uh, the possibility of the Levantine Basin, and it opened the door to all the discoveries after that. That was the lead and the biggest discovery, Leviathan. What Tamar did, actually, it enabled the Israeli economy independence in natural gas. It enabled the economy to go to assimilate the issue of gas, not just in the electric company, but also in private consumption and uh, heavy industry, and with thoughts also so regarding the household uh, consumption, because Tamar gave a horizon to the Israeli economy for decades ahead, gave us the independence and the energetic uh, security, which are so important to such an energetic island as Israel is. However, 
later on, the moment we uh, deciphered the, the DNA of the geology of the Levantine basis, after we drilled the Dalit, it was held by BG, by the time we went over to Leviathan. Leviathan is the biggest discovery in the world of its kind as a standalone discovery in the last decade. A huge discovery, 22 TCF, which is double than Tamar, and after that we drilled uh, the one in Cyprus. Cyprus, which is actually part of that Levantine basin. Until today it's the only discovery, we hope there'll be more later on, and as we speak there's ENI, which are now drilling uh, another explanation, but to date, uh, four and a half, uh, uh, TC, Aphrodite, that's the discovery in Cyprus, and later on we drilled the uh, Tanin, then Karish, and also Tamar Southwest. Actually, Tamar Southwest is the last discovery, which is uh, separate from Tamar. That was drilled through our exploratory activity in the Levantine Basin. All in all, we sit today, all the partners, joint venture, on 40 TCF of resources, a very large amount of gas. If, if Tamar took us to independence, the Levitan and the others took us to the next phase, the ultimate phase, which enables us to become exporters of natural gas. Namely, this is the ultimate status of us as an energetic country, and this uh, was done in a historical timetable in international terms. The timetable, it took us to develop Yam Tetis, and then Tamar has no precedent anywhere else in the world, because some of our DNA as ones who operate in that is to work as fast as possible, believing that we have an existing market in this Israel and in the region that actually is thirsty for this gas and with all the economic benefits and geopolitical benefits has to be developed and brought to those economies as fast as possible. And in between we have the regulation. And the regulation in Israel also went through a revolution. Of course, paralleled a little bit of a delay as things happen naturally. And in fact, uh, this uh, manner that came from the sky, or rather from the earth, uh, was a huge surprise for everybody, not just the professional world, but of course the government of Israel as well, that was supposed to adapt itself very quickly to this huge event that happened with uh, the implications that it had. And I must say here, you know, usually uh, from morning to night I uh, criticize regulation, but here I'd like to say in general that all in all, the government in Israel knew how to create or actually to uh, de uh, dedicate itself to do things as much as possible in order to adapt the tools that it had in order to cope with this new industry which came out of nowhere. That's of course a general compliment, but of course the moment you dive one level under it, it's only criticism, criticism, there's no coordination between the regulators, some of the decisions are not exactly in our professional mind are good, but at the end of the day I think that the state and the government actually understood what was going on and tried in the most successful way to adapt itself, and of course these things uh, take unfortunately much longer than we as entrepreneurs would have liked to see. But you have to mention two events which are groundbreaking. One is the one of the Shashinsky Shinsky Commission, which uh, retroactively actually changed the rules of the game financially and went through a process of legislation uh, and that enables today to increase the piece of the pie of the Israeli public. And it uh, was legislated, that's the new regime, and the second commission was the Tzemach Commission, and uh, Shaul Tzemach, the man in the committee, is sitting here with us today. This is a committee that was supposed to analyze generally 
this event of the gas discoveries and its implications both economically as well as geopolitically and also to try to take out of it uh, very specific production and that was a historic decision. What is the share of the gas that was discovered that has to be uh, preserved for local needs in order to supply all the needs of the Israeli economy and what is the quota that we can export in order to enable us to advance. And finally, these are two political decisions which are actually groundbreaking and of course around them there are a lot of other events, uh, environment and uh, antitrust laws, etc. that the great fear was at the time not to just not to have coordination between the regulators because we think the coordination is a zine qua non in order to create the capability to go ahead, but what's no less important is the certainty. If we talk about huge investments in this industry, like in Leviathan, you have to understand that in order to go into investments of billions of dollars, the biggest project ever in Israel, you have to have certainty. If you don't have certainty, no investor, sophisticated professional will go into this adventure if he thinks that every Monday or Thursday the rules of the game are going to change. So certainty is important, coordination is important, and professionalism, to look at things professionally rather than populistically and to understand that any decision you make has uh, implications for years to come. And unless we uh, bring the investors or we make them run away, from Israel, those investors will never come back because they always have alternatives. We're not the only place in the world where you have uh, gas and oil. The world is a big wide world and you have to be careful, I would say in the most cautious way possible to preserve this momentum that took place here in the industry and to attract as many players as possible. And today, unfortunately, there's no international player in the state of Israel, even in the horizon. And those who are here are the same players that were here throughout the last few years. And I think this is a soul searching that we have to do. The government has to do. How can it be that we couldn't manage to use the momentum, this fantastic success, to attract additional investors? And in if the past we drilled in three places parallelly. Today, there's not even one in the horizon. We don't have one contract, uh, contract that should work in Israel, and that's the best example to the fact that we are today in a situation that there's no exploratory activity in our uh, area after this success, and we have to ask why. A lot of it has to do because of the way the government is conducting itself and the regulators, and actually not only did they not attract more investors that made the ones that were here run away quickly. So since the time is short, let me give you just uh, highlights regarding the economical aspects. Uh, you know, Yam Tetis was the first one, and it actually uh, allowed us to go over to natural gas. But even this small project uh, gave us very significant contributions in saving money. Second one was Tamar. You see this slide we like very much on the left. You see a, a sketch that we like to be proud of. It shows uh, the bubble. The red bubble, you see the size of uh, the drill of Tamar as opposed to others at the time, the depth of the water, it was in very deep water, and the time that went through the discovery and the development, we have a world record here as far as uh, the time it took between the discovery and the development. And we're talking a lot about uh, economic benefits from Tamar, but also a lot of initial things that happened. Not just the time it took to develop, not just the size of the project, three and a half billion dollars, the biggest ever in the state of Israel without government support, that in between you have all these red regular Chase and uh, 
changes in whatever, and also a lot of other parameters, uh, technology. You know, we have uh, uh, the, the, the shorter times between this and the platform. We had to build a new one because, uh, you know, people opposed to that, they ask, what about the Jewish brain? You've got so many inventions. How can it be that uh, you were in the north vis-a-vis uh, -vis Haifa, 90 kilometers from Haifa, and the pipe doesn't get to Haifa that would give us an advantage. It's part of your energetic security that you have Yam Tetis in the south, and this is in the north. That's the logic. What was this Jewish sophistication? What's the trick? No trick, no nothing. But just the fact that they didn't allow us to take this line to the north, and the government's determination did not enable us to make a resolution, and they had to make uh, the project more expenses, billion dollars, because of the opposition of the people, and it cost us 10 billion shekel money down the drain for alternatives just because the government wasn't able to govern, to make a decision, to build this installation in the right place and uh, where we should have been. Oh. Go no. Well, yes, NIMBY is not in my backyard. All the environmentalists and the movement, they didn't, they didn't understand what it was all about. They didn't want it. They thought it was a threat. But it's very low in such an installation uh, dealing with pressure. It's not such a big deal. But when you have a public uh, climate and people oppose, and there's no determination on the other end of professionals, not of politicians, that's what happens. Okay, let's not go into it, but let's go on. Eventually, the economic uh, benefits throughout the years, we think that with taxes and uh, royalties, uh, we'll give a billion shekel to the uh, government, and the next one is going to be even higher. We're talking about 22 TCF, 360 billion shekels for the state, and we're talking about a huge change. Just Leviathan can uh, raise uh, the Israeli export by 15%. And the development of Nibiatan uh, talks about a pipeline that will go to the north without elaborating. But to conclude, I'm already minus three minutes. Okay, I'm going to increase the deficit. I think the most crucial thing, the point that's more important, what happens beyond that? We said that Leviathan takes us to export. We built here a strategy in coordination with the government, a strategy of marketing to the regional markets. You see on this map the general possibilities that we have. First of all, economically, of course, uh, uh, type guys, pipe gas export, that's the most economical, time-wise and total investment, and the uh, remuneration. Uh, we're talking about 60% uh, royalties, and we're talking about connecting this uh, reservoir to the neighboring countries, Jordan, Egypt, collaboration with Cyprus, because we explored the uh, surprises, and that's phase one of the development of Leviathan, between six to seven billion dollar investment, almost double than the one that was needed for Tamar, which was uh, very big, as I said. And what did we do until today? Here there definitely there were strategies that were planned and implemented according to phases that we thought about very carefully. The first phase was the one, I'm talking about uh, Jordan now, we're talking about the fact that we signed a full agreement from Tabar to supply gas to the potash works and the bromides uh, that are linked to the other side of the Dead Sea and the Dead Sea enterprises. We are negotiating today to supply from Leviathan to the Jordanian electric company and an agreement for 15 years, 45 BCM, and we're talking about the Palestinian Authority. That was actually the initial agreement to supply gas that uh, will uh, help the power station in Jenin, in the West Bank, Egypt. Two interesting things. They have a liquid, uh, liquidation enterprises. Why build a new one for $10 million with all the problems when we have two uh, plants that exist? One is that that is operated by Union Fenosa with uh, 
process, it's called the Mieta. The other one is a BG. Uh, these two plants in Egypt almost are not operative. One not at all, the other one only half. And they're dying for gas. And where is the only gas that can serve uh, as, uh, for these plants is Israeli gas from Tamar and Leviathan, and these are negotiations that we're holding with them. But the Israeli, the, sorry, he says, the Egyptian economy is in deficit, which is very high of gas, because its regulation was such that actually destroyed the economy, the local economy in Egypt. And that's why we're talking about an additional agreement, which is a completing one of supply to the local market in Egypt. And obviously, we have Block 12 in Cyprus. It can supply the gas to Egypt. As well. So we're talking about a puzzle here because we're in a political environment. Now I'm a great minus. We're definitely in a political regional puzzle, very complex. But the good news is that in this puzzle, we are not the problem. We are the solution. We are the solution that can connect all these consumers with Israel on a real economic infrastructure, not just political, economical. And of course, the economical connection goes like a glove to hand into the policy of the state of Israel, no matter now which government, like a glove to a hand, and of course also to the policy of the United States. And I want to thank the constant, determined support of the administration in the United States to advance these regional agreements. They're supported by the government there and Israel and also the American and the neighboring country. These are so essential when we talk about such agreements. That's our vision, and we hope to implemented for the first phase of Leviathan, but it's going to have another phase. Phase two, I'm not going to tell you now, but it can also include a floating energy element and also to export gas to Turkey. I'm not talking now about the huge Turkish economy. It can be... Uh, I'm not talking about other implications that uh, might change the long-term vision of supply to Turkey, but also to center in uh, Western Europe. Dramatic changes. And again, instead of being a problem, we can be a good solution, not just for us, but also for others. So what we're asking all in all is just don't stop this music leverage it, because after all, this is a situation that it's really without even just a headline or a slogan, this is a situation which is a win-win one. Thank you very much.